Hey everyone! In this tutorial, we'll learn how to train our own LoRa without leaving the ComfyUI environment. No need to install extra software like Kosya SS or Flux Gym. You'll just need to download a ready-made workflow and install any missing nodes through the manager. This is super convenient because all the training parameters are laid out clearly, so you won't need to jump between tabs, trying to remember which checkbox you ticked or what value you entered. If something goes wrong, you can easily tweak the parameters and restart the training. This workflow was created by Kajay. If you've been using ComfyUI for a while, you probably know them. They based it on the Koya SS LoRa training tool, integrating all its features into ComfyUI. By the end, we'll have a fully trained LoRa and test it out. I'll run two LoRa trainings, one for a character and one for a style. For the style transfer, I'll use the 1988 animated film Treasure Island. I created the character myself, so let's dive in. Go to Kijai's page, where they briefly describe their integration. The easiest way to get started is to download the sample workflow from the developer's page. Open it in Comfy UI and install any missing nodes. There are two examples here, one for training on the SDXL model and one for Flux. Download it to any folder you like, drag and drop it into Comfy UI. The nodes will likely turn red, indicating missing dependencies. Head to the manager and install the missing nodes using Install Missing Custom Nodes. Select them. Click Install. Next, you'll be prompted to choose a version. I'll pick the nightly build since it's usually the most up-to-date. Restart Comfy UI and refresh the page. All set. The nodes are now available and we can start tweaking the parameters. Now, a bit about my setup and some issues I ran into. Your experience might be smoother depending on your graphics card. My GPU is an RTX 5080 with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It's based on the new Blackwell architecture which caused some software version conflicts. For example, I made a video generation tutorial using the frame pack extension, but I couldn't get it to work on my new GPU. Others seem to manage, but I haven't dug into it deeply yet. As for training LoRa and generating images, I hit a conflict with Xformers, a tool that speeds up generation. Even the latest version wasn't compatible with my GPU, and during LoRa training, I only got black backgrounds instead of preview images. I fixed it by disabling Xformers. I edited the ComfyUI startup file and added the dash dash disable Xformers flag. Here are some details about my setup. Just for reference, your versions might differ, but that's fine as long as ComfyUI is working. My Python version is 3.12.10. PyTorch version is 2.8. CUDA is 12.8. I'm using the latest version of ComfyUI. I'm running a portable build here. Your versions might be different, but that's not critical. Just make sure your PyTorch version isn't lower than what the developer specifies. Check the developer's page for the minimum required version. Let's go through the setup step by step, node by node, the train dataset general config node. Leave everything as default except for the shuffle caption field. You can leave it off, but enabling it makes the dataset images load in random order, which improves training. It's like shuffling a deck of cards. It keeps the model from getting stuck. This field indicates that captions will be pulled from text files. Images and their captions must be in the same folder, and their file names must match. No spaces in file names. This is crucial, or you'll get errors during training. A quick note on images. I'll train two LoRa's, one for a character and one for a style, to give a more comprehensive example. For facial features, the character's face should appear in different angles and with varied expressions. My dataset is pretty limited, but this character is just a starting point, like a rough draft. After training the LoRa, I'll refine it by adding variety, combining it with other LoRa's, and creating different locations and poses. Ideally, the character should already be in diverse locations and scenarios. The more variety, the better and more flexible the LoRa will be. Here, I dressed the boy in a few different outfits. A tutorial on clothing swaps is coming in my next video. I'm recording it now. Some sources say the ideal resolution for Flux model images is 1024 by 1024. I don't strictly follow this. 
my images vary in resolution, with both vertical and horizontal orientations, not just square, and I still get great Loras. For the style training, I just took some screenshots. Captions need to be clear and relevant, accurately describing the image. You can use A, I like grok, or C, H, A, T, G, P, T to generate captions. Upload the image and ask for a prompt in English. I built a simple workflow for auto-generating captions using the Florence 2 language model. It works by specifying the folder path where your images are stored. Here, you enter the image number, starting from zero. When you run it, it generates a prompt and saves it in the same folder with the same name as the image. Then, move to the next number. Check the prompt and compare it to the image. Always double check, as the program can make mistakes. For example, it labeled a boy as a woman here, next image and so on for each one. These are the text files. You can download this workflow for free via the link in the description. You'll also need to install the missing nodes for this workflow through the manager. When you run the workflow, it automatically downloads the required models and places them in the Florence 2 folder. For example, I chose the large model and all necessary files were downloaded to the large subfolder. Back to training. Next, there are three similar nodes. Pick one to keep. They differ by resolution. 1024 is ideal, but risky for my 16 gigabyte GPU. I'll start with 768. If it works well, I'll try 1024. Base this on your GPU's VRAM. Set batch size to one. Here, specify the folder path for your images and captions. Absolute or relative? I'll use an absolute path. This is the trigger word that defines our Laura's style. The more it appears in captions, the stronger the Laura will tie to that style. Using it in prompts later maximizes similarity. The num repeats parameter is set to one by default. Leave the last two fields as they are. They're a good range for flux. These are the models used during training. The main model is flux one dev, FPO, eight safe tensors, optimized in FP8 format to reduce memory usage. Keep it. Your model name might differ slightly, so reselect it from the list. Here's another nuance. By default, it uses a lightweight model. I have it and will select it. It has the same name. I start the training and immediately get an error. It took me a while to figure out why. Then I looked up and saw the developer's warning. Turns out the error occurred because, despite the identical model name, my model was compressed in a different FP8-like format, not torch.float, causing a conflict. When I switched to the standard full-size model, the issue disappeared and training started successfully. You can use any model you want, but ensure it's in the correct format. My VAE has a different name, so I'll select it. It's the same model. This model is also called T5XXLFP8, and I have it. I'll select it. Next node, optimizer settings. Optimizer type is came. I used to use Adafactor, but I'll try this one since it's tailored for flux, and Adafactor isn't listed. LR scheduler, constant. This means the learning rate stays fixed throughout training. Leave everything else as is. This node sets up validation. 20 steps is a bit low for details. I'll set it to 25 for clearer samples. We'll see how it goes. The 1024 value is the resolution of validation images. The size of samples we see during training. It's high quality. I'll lower it to speed things up and reduce load. These are intermediate images and don't affect the final LoRa quality. Leave the other parameters as they are. Next node, initflux LoRa training. I won't go into every parameter since most don't need tweaking. They're already set optimally. I'll only cover the ones you might adjust for specific tasks. The output name field is where you name your model. Output dear, specify the path where trained LoRa's will be saved. I'm using an absolute path. Don't touch the next two fields. They're the standard LoRa dimension and scale. 0004 is the learning rate. You can keep it or lower it slightly for more precise style adherence. I'll leave it as is. I set a very low number of steps because I was testing the workflow's functionality. The default was 3000 steps. 
which is fine for complex styles or large data sets. For 20 to 30 images and facial feature training, that's way too many. Your LoRa will overfit. The number of epics would be excessive. It's calculated as steps divided by batch size, one in this case, times the number of images. So, 3,000 times 1 divided by 20 equals 150 epics. That's way too much. Set it between 300 and 500 steps and check the final LoRa's quality. If it's underperforming, increase steps. If it's overfitting, reduce them. I'll go with 500. Leave the other parameters as they are, the string constant multiline node. Here, you write four prompts to monitor training progress via four intermediate samples. They're separated by vertical bars. The developer trained a LoRa on Akihiko Yoshida's art style, a complex style, so they used 3,000 steps. They likely had a huge data set too. Moving on, the developer has four identical node groups for training loops. The Flux Train Loop node. Each handles part of the training, saving intermediate results, LoRa checkpoints. Kijai set 3,000 steps, splitting it into four loops of 750 steps each. I'll aim for 500 steps, so I'll deactivate the first three loops. And that's about it. Here, you specify where the trained LoRa's will be saved. Start the training. Errors popped up here because I deactivated the loops, so it couldn't access some variables. This doesn't affect the training. Now, be patient and wait. To monitor progress, open the console. It shows 32 epics here. Training one LoRa took 28 minutes on my GPU. It could take two, three, or more hours, depending on your GPU's power. Let's test the trained LoRa's, starting with the pirates. I love it. The style transferred beautifully. Now, let's check out the Gothic boy. The Laura did great here, too. Due to the limited data set, I had to use another Laura to depict varied locations. The boy's gaze is often tilted one way because most reference images had that look. That's my mistake, not a training issue. Mission accomplished. The pirates can crack open a bottle of rum. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel.